Let's bring in Andrew Kramer today from the Star Tribune. We're going to review the film. Andrew, again, film looks pretty good when you win 34-7, to 3-0 um, and the Vikings are. We'll get to that film here in just a minute, some of how they're doing it on offense and defense. Um, first, you got to indulge my takes, though, my three hot takeaways. Um, I can't wait. Let's it's it's do been it. like, you know... You've been chiding me. You're saying it's a little bit too, a little bit too <laughs> mild at the start. Maybe I'm just trying to temper my own kind of match, the yeah. kind of tr- tr- pattern matching. I'm tone matching here a little bit to make sure we're not getting ahead of ourselves out over our skis. But um, maybe we'll go over the skis this time. Hot takeaway number one: at three and zero, rip up everything we thought we knew about the Vikings. They are the NFC North favorites now. Ooh boy. Um... You know, and I haven't seen them play a divisional game yet, obviously. So I don't know too much about the Detroit Lions this year. I do know that the Green Bay Packers are somehow winning with Malik Willis against just impressive against subpar opponents. Um, So, yeah, at this point, the Vikings have they have one of the most impressive starts in the NFL, not just the NFC North. So I see where you're coming from. I can't try to talk you down too much at this point. Um, they're playing like it. They have the, they have such incredible confidence right now. They're so well coached. They they're healthy in the right spots, even though they've had some guys, some some guys uh, being held out. They largely have been okay outside. I mean, there's teams like the Rams, the Niners, who are just getting beaten by injuries, and the Vikings have been able to withstand and hold their own. And so, yeah, Mike, I, I can't argue with you too much there. I, I don't think that's too uh, too outlandish or over our skis. Okay, then try this one. Hot takeaway number two. Aaron Jones is the best all-around Vikings running back that I've watched in my lifetime. Wow. All around? Yes. I know Adrian Peterson is a Hall of Fame runner. He could not catch. He could not block. He was a great running back. Aaron Jones is the best all-around running back that I've seen in a Vikings uniform. You're already putting him past peak Dalvin Cook. Yes. Yes, I am. What? Why is that? Because when I think of Dalvin Cook, I think of um, even as late as the 81-yard like screen pass he took against the Colts in that in that uh, classic comeback. Um, but w- when he was at his best, it was the wide zone stuff, the 2019 putting the team on his back. He, he carried more of the load Dalvin Cook did than certainly Aaron Jones has had to do. Yet at this point, I think Aaron Jones has like, for the Vikings and Vikings fans and, and all of us who have seen this team for long enough, he's like a, a glass of water after crawling through a desert because it was so bad the last couple of years in the run game, including that last year with Dalvin Cook. I think it's easy to forget. That's the bridge too far for me. I, I think I think peak Dalvin Cook showed a lot more at this point. Jones could be if he stays healthy, plays 17 games. I just think this Vikings offense is never going to lean on the running back as much and when you're up 34-7, you, you can do that like they did on Sunday. But typically, this team is going to want to pass the ball. When you get TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison back, they're going to, Kevin O'Connell's not going to be able to help himself, I don't think. Um, so to me, that's where I would stop just because of what Jones is being asked to do. And he he's coming off his best game. You're right. Like that, that game, 148 yards from scrimmage. They got the screen game going. That was a key component. Him in the receiving game without Addison or Hawkinson, as I said, um, so he did a lot of things for them on, on Sunday and continues to do a lot of things for them. And he's up there. Um, and then Adrian was so good at the one thing, right? It's like, I know, I know. Yeah. So I guess I totally see your point there. Um, and then I know there's running backs. I mean, Robert Smith before them, yeah. um, they've had a lot of good runners throughout the years. So, um, but I would even think Dalvin peak Dalvin cook. Mike was so good. He was. Maybe I'm dealing with some recency bias, the glass of water in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that drove me crazy about Dalvin, though, is he was he was an okay blocker, but not great. He also, the negative plays. W- one thing, I, I watched Jones, and I think it's going to be zero or one, and he manages to get two or three. And it seems like a small thing, right? It's not, that's not going to, like, show up on the stat sheet necessarily, but he's he's very good at avoiding negative plays and getting you at least into second and seven instead of second and 11. And that's a big deal for this offense. 
That is a good point. And, and you're right. And that's what they thought Alexander Madison was going to do yes. for them last year. Like this guy's such a tackle breaker that he'll never go down with the first touch. But Jones is different in the way he's so elusive. He sets up cuts. Mark or Mark Craig did a great story a week ago on kind of inside the mind of Aaron Jones and how he anticipates where defenders are going to be. So much of it comes pre-snap and him reading the formations and knowing how defenses want to attack their blockers. Um, it's just a veteran who's seen, you know, nine different, 10 different years in the NFL at this point. And for him to be still so physically good, that's the part I didn't see coming is like this guy's yes. 29. I thought he wasn't going to be outrunning people. And he did get caught at the one yard yes. line on the 39 yard. run. Yes. Which was much frustrated him because then they gave him one more carry. But it was, it was just like, nope, we got to go somewhere <laughs> else now. But yeah, he's still you're right. He's still so good. And I think that mind that he's got where, yeah, he, he just sets things up. He can make the first guy miss. It is invaluable to this offense because Sam Darnold on second and six is so much better than second and 14. Third hot take. That's probably my hottest one yet. Um, third hot take. Uh, her hot takeaway. Vikings offense is really good right now without TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison. I wonder if we're overrating how much better they can be with them. Are they? I almost wonder if they're just as good or even better off without Hawkinson because he's not a great blocker. I. I do think Hawkinson changes things in the passing game, and I think he'll change things for Darnold in terms of having the over-the-middle target that they just don't have right now. Johnny Munt, Josh Oliver. There was a play where uh, Darnold trusted Josh Oliver way too much on a... Yes, on a, it was like yeah. a, it was, he threw a double coverage. And it was, he helped yeah. dropped interception. I mean, those are the kind of plays that... Even if it's Hawkinson, you do not want to throw that. No. But those are the kind of plays they want to set Hawkinson up on and in the right setting, hit them for big gains. And this is a guy who had from Josh Dobbs, TJ Hawkinson, a record, what was it, 10 or 12 first half catches against the Saints last year in that record setting performance. Um, he is a game changer. And, and I do think he is the biggest or bigger absence out of him and Addison. I think Addison's yeah. more replaceable in that Jalen Naylor is truly a three-position wide receiver, can do all the motions, can run all the routes. He's not as talented as Addison. He's not going to break as many tackles. He's not going to be as electric downfield. Um, but you can manufacture and make it work. And frankly, when Aaron Jones in the, in the screen game and getting him going in the receiving game, when that's working so well, it's even uh, more easy to forget of the quick underneath stuff with Jordan Addison and Jalen Naylor scored touchdowns in three straight games. This guy has yep. found ways to get open in the end zone, make those uh, contested catches, get his feet down, even the explosive plays too. He's, he's caught some downfield. So um, the, I, the only one I would push back on is I do think Hawkinson is a guy that Kevin O'Connell really knows how to use and is such a dangerous weapon that you're right. He's not the greatest blocker, but Frankly, when I watch Oliver and Munt sometime, especially Munt, but Oliver has been up and down for a guy where that's supposed to be his specialty. Um, it can be hit or miss because they do give him some pretty tough assignments. So um, I, I know the Vikings are very much looking forward to getting both those guys back. And I think Hawkinson's the one that, you know, fantasy football people and all that are going to get incredibly excited about because he probably will have a big role. I just worry that O'Connell's not going to be able to help himself and we're going to be back to 38 <laughs> throws and 18 runs instead of 28 of each. Cause I think the balance on this offense is really important. You don't want to overexpose Darnold as well as he has been playing. That's a great, it is a good point because they had that balance on Sunday. It is easier to have that balance when it's Johnny Munt and Jalen Naylor out there.